Hello there, my name is Maher Haddad. Today I'm going to show you how to configure policy routing and the IPSLA uh, for uh, this uh, lab what we see in front of us. Uh, so let's go to the lab scenario. Uh, you work as network engineer in a company and your gateway router, which is this router, is connected to two ISPs, ISP1 and ISP2. All IP addresses are already configured, so you don't need to configure, or I will not uh, configure it myself. So the tasks are, one, configure the gateway router in a way that HTTP traffic from PC1, from this PC1 over here, should go to ISP2. So HTTP to ISP2. All other traffics from PC1 should go to ISP1. So all other traffics has to go to ISP1, only HTTP to ISP2. And then we have to configure the gateway router in a way that HTTPS and Telnet originated from PC2, HTTPS and Telnet from PC2 should go to ISP1 and all other traffic from PC2 should go to ISP2. And then we have to verify uh, that we have configured the two point correctly by doing some tests. Okay, so let's take first one. We have to configure the gateway that PC1, the HTTP traffic from PC1 should go to ISP2 and the other should go to ISP1. Okay, so let's do it. Um, yeah, uh, PC1 and PC2 are uh, two routers, so we, as you can see here, but the routers are acting as a PC. So, uh, uh, just uh, for your information. And now on, I go to Gateway. First of all, I have to create a uh, an access list. I'll make a named access list, extended, and I will name it PC1. Permit uh, TCP from host 192.168.0.1. This is the IP of PC1. To go to any. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this is, uh, oops, uh, I didn't finish yet, so uh, I have to put uh, equal to any equal to port 80, which is HTTP. Okay, so we need to take HTTP to go to ISP2, and the rest should go to ISP one. Then I have to create another access list, IP access list, extended, I will name it PC1 any, and then permit IP from host 192.168.0.1 to any. So now if I do Show access list. Okay, uh, I think I made a mistake when I deleted. Uh, so, um, uh, what I would do now is uh, I'll delete this one again and recreated the access list again. So, let's first be sure that we don't have, yeah, we have. Extended IP access is PC1 and PC1 any. So let's go first to IP access list PC uh, extended PC1. Then here I say permit TCP from host 192.168.0.1 to go to any place equal port 80. Then I will go again to IP access list extended PC1 any permit IP from host 192.168.0.1 to go to any place. So uh, let's do now. Maybe you can hear the voice of my daughter crying. <laughs> Okay, so now we have two access lists, uh, PC1 and PC1 any, 
this one is for port 80 or www and this one for anything and then uh, yeah I have to create uh, a route map now route map uh, I will name it a traffic and then permit 10 and I will say match IP address PC1 so for the port 80 and then I will say set IP next hop to be so ICTP has to go to ISP2 so it's the next hop should be 90.0.0.2 which is IP of this serial interface on ISP2 and now I will say route map traffic permit 20 match IP address and what was it PC1 any and then set IP next hop so all other traffic should go to ISP1 which is 80.0.0.1 sorry 80.0.0.1 okay so now if I do show route map okay so this is route map traffic the sequence 10 it matched accesses PC1 and it set next hop to this one and then uh, sequence 20 it matched PC any and 80.1 so for now it's good but of course route map will not be effective uh, without uh, we apply it but before we apply it we have to do the step number two we have to configure the gateway router in a way that HTTPS and 10NET originated from PC2 should go to ISP1 to here and then all other traffic to ISP2 so then HTTPS and 10NET so now on gateway so I have to create this uh, also for uh, I have to create access list and I'll apply it to route map and finally we apply everything to the fast internet 0 over 0 router uh, gateway router uh, to make uh, to have effects so here I'll say IP access list extended and I will name it PC2 then we have to permit TCP from host 192.168.0.2 to any and that's for HTTPS um, uh, yeah, we have to put equal, e equal, and um, that's HTTPS, and then also we have to permit TCP from host 192.0.2 to any equal 23, which is for 10 net, and then I will create another access list, IP access list, uh, extended, PC2 any permit IP from host 192.168.0.2 to any and uh, that's it so now if I do show access list so we, sh we look at these two then we created PC PC2 to for HTTPS and internet and PC2 any for anything then here I have to go to route map again and the, it was traffic I think yeah and then I will say permit 30 which is sequence 30 now I will say match IP address uh, PC2 yeah and then set next hop set IP next hop and uh, for HTTP and HTTPS should go to ISP1 then it should be 80.0.0.1 exit now route map again and now 40 sequence number 40 match IP address PC2 any and set IP next hop so for, for the, all the others they should go to uh, ISP2 am I correct 
yeah and the other traffic should go to ISP2 so now it's uh, the IP is 90.0.0.2 all right so let's have a look on our route map now okay so uh, sequence 10 and 20 we already checked that uh, now sequence 30 here uh, match IP address PC2 and let, it has to go to this router that's correct this is ISP and then sequence 40 match IP address to PC2 any and then it has to go to 90.0.0.2 that's also correct so now everything is good so let's apply this uh, route map I have to go to the interface fast Ethernet 0 over 0 and here I have to say uh, uh, IP policy route map and uh, <coughs> traffic and that's it okay um, now let's do some tests so PC1 we said he is able to do HTTP to ISP2 so let's try I go to PC1 now and I will do telnet 90.0.0.2 port 80 so it's open as you can see here so um, yeah it's working and if I go back to the gateway and I do show route map you can see here uh, this one you can see here 15 packets and 900 bytes because uh, we made it uh, HTTP to ISP2 so um, uh, there's 15 packets which has been sent from PC1 to PC2 to ISP2 now if I do for example uh, let's do from PC1 ping I will ping to ISP1 uh, 80.0.0.1 and I have reply so now uh, we have to check and we should see here some increase on on packets for this uh, route map here so let's check again and the yes we can see here the sequence number 20 has been increased by five packets which is of course one two three four five pink which has been sent okay um, so let's try now to make uh, HTTP to ISP1 so I'll make telnet 80.0.0.1 port 80 so it's not possible uh, yeah because it's unreachable but uh, but on ISP2 it's working all right uh, now if I do ping to ISP2 it should not give me an answer let's check because we only allowed uh, to go to HTTP so you can see it's unreachable okay so that's uh, on PC1 let's try now PC2 and on PC2 we said that HTTPS and Telnet is allowed on ISP to ISP1 so let's try Telnet 80.0.0.1 yes we can Telnet but if I do telnet to eight to ninety to zero to zero to two, it's not possible. Now, if I do uh, HTTPS to eighty to zero to zero dot one, yeah, it's working. Open, you can see here. But if I do telnet to ninety to zero to zero to two. It's not working and of course if we check uh, on the gateway uh, so you can see here uh, there's oops there's no there's uh, no package here yet but if I do it now show route map again you can see that uh, yeah packet has been increased here and of course if I do ping now let's let's do ping from PC2 to ISP2, for example, 90.0.0.2, 0 
it's successful and now if I go to the gateway it should be it should we should see some packets over here and yeah we see five packets which is the pink but if I do to 80.00.1 it's unreachable all right okay uh, so what's happening now I tried to ping from here to ISP 1 <coughs> But uh, it goes to ISP2 because ping has to go, all other traffic has to go to ISP2. Um, so you can see here it has been increased by four packets. So this is how to do the policy routing. Uh, it's very good if you have someone in your company who really use a lot of traffic which is not uh, for, for the work like a torrent or peer-to-peer -peer or whatever. Or playing games for example if you know the port of the game. Then if you have two ISP, one which is fast connection and one is slow connection, then you can put this PC or this client or this customer or this user you have in the company, you can put him on the ISP which has the lowest bandwidth and this way um, he will not be able to do the huge download that he or to play games as, uh, as it should be. But of course you can do much more if you do quality of service uh, on the router, but that's uh, out of the topic for the moment. So uh, this is the first part of, uh, of the lab. So we did one, two, three, verify, we verified that. Now on traffic, uh, on number four, we are asking us uh, that the traffic originated from the gateway router, from this router, should always choose to ISP1, ISP it should go to ISP1 always. In case ISP1 is down, then tra the traffic originated from the gateway router again should, should switch to ISP2. So in case, uh, so router uh, gateway should always prefer ISP1 maybe because it has a better bandwidth over here, a bigger bandwidth than ISP2. But in case ISP1 is down, then directly the gateway uh, automatically uh, should uh, switch to ISP2. In order to do the, this configuration, we have to uh, create uh, we have to configure the IP SLA. Um, so uh, this has to be done from the gateway. So let's go to the gateway. And uh, here I have to create IP SLA. Uh, first, uh, before we do that, let's do ping 80.0.0.1. That's okay. And ping 90.0.0.2. That's fine. So IP SLA, monitor and uh, I would choose number one and here I have to put the type is echo so we are going to uh, use echo to ping uh, 80.0.0.1 which is ISP1 to be sure that this one is available and here you can uh, put the uh, source ad IP address or source interface I would I would not put anything so uh, this is IP SLA configuration, then I have to start it, uh, start the process. To do that, I have to write IP SLA monitor, and here I have to say schedule, uh, entry of schedule one, for example, and then the start time, I want it to be now. And the lifetime, I want it to be forever. So I want this uh, ping, from route to the gateway to ISP should be should start now as we click the enter here and should uh, stay forever. All right, so now IP SLA is configured. Uh, we have to apply this one to a track. So we say track number, for example, one or any number you want. And this has to be linked to the IP SLA. The old name of SLA was RTR, so RTR. And then the entry number is one because uh, you can see here that uh, the SLA we have created uh, was 1. Okay, so RTR1 and I will say reach, reachability and enter. And, uh, and then um, what I have to do, I have to create a route map. Uh, on the route map I have uh, to say uh, for example, SLA, permit 10, I will match anything, so I will not put match, 
and then I will say set IP next hop verify availability and 80.0.0.1 and this route map has a sh this one is set it has a sequence of 10 and it's linked to the track number one which is in turn linked to the SLA monitor so what I'm saying now that the gateway uh, should always take the ISP one in case there is reachability and the, reach, the reachability is verified uh, by the track which is linked by the SLA now the second option in case ISP one is down then I have to say set IP next hop to be 90.0.0.2 so in case ISP is down then it has to go to ISP 2 now if I do show route map SLA you can see now that it is uh, up it tell me it, it tells me that now it is up so the link here is up uh, now this has not been uh, applied yet so I have to apply it and this has to be done globally so I have to say IP local policy and route map and uh, the route map we created is SLA and enter now everything is good now so uh, I would do again show route map SLA and uh, yeah everything is fine so let's ping now I would do uh, ping 80.0.0.1 and I have reachability so if you look now to the route map you can see that it was one packet here and it has increased to six packets because it sent five uh, five pings to ISP1. So now let's try to ping 90.0.0.2 which is ISP2. Uh, what do you think? Do we have, uh, we will get a reply or not? Uh, in my logic it will not because we said that all traffic going from the gateway and ping is ISCMP traffic it should go to ISP1. So if we have a reply from ISP2 we, sh we have to recheck our configuration and uh, yeah we can see that there's no reply this means that our configuration is correct uh, but uh, this doesn't mean that the interfaces are down between gateway and the isp2 and if i show you i do show ip interface brief you can see that here is serial one over one is up so there is up up there is a uh, connectivity between uh, between uh, the two routers but because the traffic on the gateway is not, uh, the gateway is not allowing any traffic to go to ISP2 unless ISP1 is down. So now I don't have a reply. So what we have to do, I will go to ISP1 and uh, shut down the interface. Then in this case, it should switch directly to ISP2. So I'll go to ISP1 and I will say shut down. Uh, that's interface zero, 0 over 0. So, uh, I shut down the interface, it's down now, let's go to the gateway again, and uh, show IP interface brief, uh, serial 1 over 0 is still showing to me up, let's wait a little bit, okay, now it's down. So now if I do show route map again, SLA, uh, it's showing to me still up but uh, in a moment it will be down, yeah. So now it, it was pinging to the ISP and now fi finally it didn't receive a reply, then it put it down directly. Now, uh, in this case, now, as it is down, so this means this this one is not, uh, the set close is not met anymore, then it, switch, it should switch directly to 90.0.0.2, which is ISP2. So let's try to ping now, 90.0.0.2 and we have reply uh, if you see here before uh, I did not have a reply so this is how uh, to do the configuration uh, by uh, uh, using the IP SLA and the track and route map and then uh, you apply it uh, globally to the router uh, very nice uh, uh, lab, uh, especially for those who work in company that have connectivity to ISP, 
uh, in order to perform this uh, backup uh, in case one ISP is down. So it will switch directly to the second ISP. 